their life. That's our goal. So what is implied? Well, the fact that our children are invited to Jesus, the Savior, implies that children need a Savior. Listen, children are sinners too. Did you get that? Children are sinners too. Now they're not born that way, as some folks teach. But they are sinners too. That's why we must bring our children face to face with the claims of the gospel. It is our duty to expose them to God's truth. When children hear the gospel preached and taught and lived out, they are more likely to come to Jesus at an early age. And that's so important. How? Why do they come? Because of the teaching of God's Word. In Romans, the, the 10th chapter, in verse 17, it says that faith, or trusting God, comes by hearing, and hearing the Word of God. Okay? So that's our responsibility. And when they do hear that, they figure it out pretty early. Uh, Susan's working with the young people on Wednesday night and they have a, a special lesson for that week and they have a special prayer. And they always, uh, in the relationship, you know, they'll come up and tell us their, their, their prayer. And then what, what they say when they depart, God bless you. God bless you. That's how they, that's their greeting when they leave. Little children, God bless you. God bless you. And they're, they're getting the Word of God taught to them. You see, Paul told Timothy about exposing children to the Word of God, and he demonstrated it in uh, Timothy's life. Over in Timothy, he says, And from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures, to what purpose? which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what it implies, our text. What is involved? What is involved? A child becomes accountable for his or her sin when they understand the difference between right and wrong. Okay? It is called the age of accountability. And it is when they understand that they have done something wrong and there is a penalty to be paid for that. And what is that penalty? The wages of sin is death. When they reach the age of understanding, they come to a point where they know they are lost and that they are in need of a Savior. In need of a Savior. Now this understanding and the age which it comes is different. Is different for every child. It's not at 8 or 10 or 9 or 11 or 15. It's whenever the child understands those principles I've just stated. Amen? Amen? And so we must present the good news about Jesus Christ who died to pay for their sin. And they don't have to have the punishment anymore because Jesus took the punishment for them. You see how we just bring them to the cross. And the, the children, the young people, they understand that, then they're receptive to the plan of salvation. We must present the good news to Him that Jesus saves and He only saves. There's no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
Titus 4 and verse 12. You see, friend, children need to be taught how to be saved. They need to understand what it means to believe and to repent and to confess and to be baptized and why it's important to remain faithful. Those are teaching uh, tools that we need to spend time with our children. And while we are on the subject, what happens to the child who dies before the age of accountability? The Bible teaches us and gives us an illustration from David at, who lost his son through sin with Bathsheba. He lost his son and we find over in 2 Samuel 12 and 23 that he knew that one day he would go to be with his son who was dead. And he said at that time he says, one day I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. In other words, and that was a little child. It was baby. And died. Every child is innocent when born. And will go to heaven if they die before the age of understanding. Can we agree on that? Amen. What a blessing of the Lord. He just takes care of us right from cradle to the grave. Amen? Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Amen. So what does our text illustrate? What it illustrates? The whole matter of children coming to Jesus was used by our Lord to, to illustrate for us the way that all sinners come to Him. In the previous chapter, in Matthew 18 and verses 1 through 6, in this passage it teaches us that those who come to Jesus must be like a little child. And he's referring to those characteristics that separate children from adults. Children are trusting. Children are humble. Children are dependent. And see, when you come to God, you have to have those requirements before you even come to Him. Before you come to Jesus. For a person to be saved, regardless of their age, they must be willing to humble themselves before God, acknowledging their sins. Or that they are a sinner. That's a humbling phrase, friend. Then, becoming innocent again by being obedient to the plan that God has provided. And now, so let's talk a little bit about the Redeemer. This passage not only speaks about responsibility and redemption, it also has something to say about the Savior. And watching Jesus in this scene, in our mind's eye, the eye of faith, we can see Jesus minister to these children. And we get a glimpse of the Lord's personality. You see, we can see His heart. The disciples thought Jesus was too busy for a bunch of kids. But our text indicates that there were a long line of children coming to be blessed of Jesus. Oh my! If we could only reproduce that scene that I see in my mind's eye of children coming in a long line to Jesus. Wouldn't that be a blessing? They were coming to Jesus. When the disciples rebuked the parents in verse 13, they themselves were rebuked by Jesus in verse 14. And in Mark's account of this same scene, he adds that Jesus was much displeased when they rebuked the parents. And this means, of course, that Jesus was very angry with
with his disciples for trying to hinder or prevent children from coming to him. That's why it's so important to keep the children in mind in the mission of the church. Why, why do we bring them? So that they can play games and have fun? Partly. But mostly it's to get them saved. To give them the opportunity to call upon the Lord. That's our responsibility. So we see the heart of Jesus. Children hold a very special place in the Lord's heart. And we err when we do anything to hinder them from coming to Him. Now, in Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 6, you see, Jesus uses a little child and those He wants to bless, these little ones, and if we hinder them, He pronounces a harsh judgment on anybody who would do such a thing, who would abuse a child. And He says, uh, it's not a good thing. It'd be better for you to just put a middle stone around your neck and be dropped in the deepest, darkest, deep uh, sea. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Bob knows. I think it's somewhere off the coast of the Philippines. I don't know. Uh, the deepest place in the ocean, about, it's about 5,000 miles deep. Five thousand miles deep. Be better for you to wrap a stone around your and you never get out of there. You see, we can see His heart and we can see His hands in this Scripture. He laid His hands on them. Here is the personal touch of Jesus Christ. In other words, I can just see in my mind He's just grabbed a hold of them, give them a big hug of security. And then when He was when he was, had that special time with that little one, that one came down. The next one coming, big hug around him. The personal touch of Jesus is on the individual. <clears throat> Fanny Crosby is one of the prolific songwriters ever. In 1868, a fella brought her a, a hymn to him. And sought her wisdom as to what the words might be, and wanted her to write a poem. And he said, "I got. I'm gonna catch the train in about 35 minutes, 45 minutes." And so it said that she sat down and wrote these words: "Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on His gentle breast." There by his love o'ershaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Hark, tis the voice of angels, born in a song to me. Over the fields of glory, over the jasper sea. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast. There by his love o'ershaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe from corroding care, safe from the world's temptations, sin cannot harm me there. Free from the plight of sorrow, free from my doubts and fears, only a few more trials, only a few more tears. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on His gentle breast, there he is, by his love or shame, sweetly my soul shall rest. I wonder, friend, uh, have you been touched by Jesus? He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that fills my soul, something happened. And now I know He touched me and made me whole. Jesus made time to bless each individual child that came to Him. Children are not bothers enough. They are a blessing. 
And we as parents have our responsibility handed to us by the Savior Himself, the one who cares for little children. And you see, friend, this is the invitation of Jesus to come to Him for blessing. If you're not a Christian here this morning, won't you come in childlike faith, trusting in Him to save you?